obviously. And below the gene reaction schematic, we have an enzymatic reaction space. So what is an enzymatic reaction? Well, an enzymatic reaction is our term for something that explains how a protein carries out a given reaction. For example, RD carries out the EC reaction 26111, but so does ASTC, as you can actually see from the gene reaction schematic here. They both carry out this transamination reaction. It's the same chemical transformation, but both enzymes might not use the same cofactors or have the same kinetic values. The enzymatic reaction area contains specific information on things like cofactors, inhibitors, activators, KM, optimum pH and temperature, and so on. For example, if we go down here and look at this first enzymatic reaction entry, we can see that ARGD's enzymatic reaction area linking to 26111, the N-succinyl diaminopimylate aminotransferase activity, includes some KM data for compounds involved in this reaction. If I were to go over to the ASTC enzymatic reaction area for its catalyzing of the same reaction, again 26111, we'd see that there is no known KM data for that reaction. But it would tell us that like ARGD, it uses pyridoxal phosphate as a prosthetic group. In this way, the enzymatic reaction space, which is actually a separate database object, lets us show how an enzyme specifically carries out a given general example of a reaction. Also note that since ARGD is a bifunctional enzyme, it actually has two enzymatic reaction areas. One here, and one down here, and as I page down, you'll see that it contains the same kind of information that you expect from the other enzymatic reaction area. Each enzymatic reaction space comes with a listing of synonyms for that specific activity, the reaction that it's talking about, uh, reversibility information, pathways that that reaction is a part of, additional information specifically about how this enzyme carries out this reaction, and that's why I mentioned before you want to look both in the general protein summary and in specific summaries listed with each enzymatic reaction, prosthetic groups, cofactors, inhibitors, KMs, etc. And in addition, each enzymatic reaction comes with an evidence code. The evidence code will tell you on what basis we assert that this enzyme catalyzes this reaction. When you're looking in EcoPsych or MetaPsych, you expect to see experimental evidence codes. If you're looking in a Tier 3 database, you'd expect to see computational evidence codes here unless you adopt the database, curate it yourself, and add in your own experimental evidence derived from the literature. For proteins that don't have any enzymatic reactions, or sometimes even for proteins that do, you can also expect to find this kind of evidence code up at the top right of the protein page describing whatever the protein's function is. For example, um, molecular chaperone proteins, proteins that aid in protein folding, don't get any enzymatic reaction links because they don't link to a metabolic transformation or a transport reaction. But nonetheless, we can still show an experimental basis for their function. And so when that's there, then you expect to see an evidence icon up at the top right of the entire page. Okay, so that's a protein page for a metabolic enzyme with its enzymatic reactions. So how about we page back up go to the gene reaction schematic and see if we can go and take a look at what a typical biopsych reaction page looks like. And to do this, we're going to mouse over and click on 26111. And here we are on a typical biopsych metabolic reaction page. Up at the top, again, we have the organism. We have the EC number for that reaction when one is available, and often, as I said, we use partial ECs when we know what category a reaction should be in, but no EC number has been assigned yet. There's a cross-species comparison button that will let you look at the presence or absence of that reaction across different organisms in the biocyte collection. That will be covered, as I've said before, in our future comparative genomics webinar portion. We have where the reaction falls in the classification system. We have enzymes that carry out the reaction, in this case there are two, and the genes that code for those enzymes. We have pathways the reaction is a part of. And then down here we have a drawing of the reaction showing the inputs and the outputs with their full molecular structures when known. And again, just like in the transport reaction way back in part two of this webinar series, if you mouse over things you'll get a name for what you're looking at, and you can click on it and go to the compound in question.
Then, if I page down, down at the bottom of the page, we have again the gene reaction schematic, because of course anytime we're on any part of this network of reaction protein gene, it'll show us where we are and will let us click to move around in it. And then we have unification links to the enzyme database. That's it for this introduction to Biopsych webinar series. Other series available online and in live presentations, both from the Biopsych.org website, cover topics such as displaying high throughput data using the Biopsych site, handling comparative genomics, the features of our desktop software, and more. We hope you'll continue to use the Biopsych site at Biopsych.org and learn more about what we have to offer. And thanks for listening.